morning, I, it's my privilege, and I first just want to pray for us before I bring the word. Will that be good? Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. And thank you, Holy Spirit, Lord, for loving us um, completely, Lord, and, and for going the way before us. Thank you, Lord, for this absolute wonderful time that we can speak together around your word. Holy Spirit, I invite you now to come and speak through me, Lord, my thoughts, my mind, my heart, Lord, that um, you will come and purify and, and speak uh, what you want um, to go, like those seeds of dandelions, Lord, that the seeds will go, Lord, and thank you that we know you are growing those seeds. Lord, thank you for every woman here today with us on Zoom and whoever will be listening to this recording. Lord, thank you that we know it will go like seeds and you will bless it, Lord. Um, no matter what um, challenges we face to put it together, that it will glorify you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. So I hope everybody can hear me well. If there's any problem, just raise your hand on um, the Zoom and the lead will check for us. Come. Yeah, please just unmute yourself on Zoom if something is not right and tell us um, so we can also help you on that side. And then I'll just give you uh, every time that you can just change for me. Thanks so much. So today I really thought about my prayer. What word can I bring? And the one thing that's been standing out in my life um, is um, fear that's trying to get us down and to, uh, trying to get me down. So the theme for today was really for me, move from fear um, to glory. Maybe. So um, the word of the season that I shared with us last week uh, was, Salbona, I see you. So for me, I wanted to start with that again, um, with the two scriptures. You are named, you are called, you are counted to love and seek the best for one another. And I want to say this again, when we get into challenges, when things are not working, we are looking to a higher God and um, He has placed things in us. And He wants us to be led forth um, with peace and um, in joy. So that is something that I want you to hold on to every time that there is a challenge coming because in this world there will be challenges, there will be hardships and um, that should actually just give us, a, a, like Victor Franklin said, it, to have a, a redemptive perspective on challenges. Don't shy away from it, don't run away, but look at how do I overcome this? What do I do? Because if I do overcome this, what will be the prize of the end? So that for me is something that I'm taking to myself also for, for this season. So um, Norma approached me last week after um, we had our session um, and just asked me, do I know Salborna? Um, I see you. But she sent me something that is so amazing and I want to read this to us. Um, it literally means I see you. And what does it mean? More than words of politeness, Salborna carries the importance of recognizing the worth the dignity of each person and if we just every time that I greet you or I look at you to say I see more than just you I want to slow down and see deeper <coughs> and I think that is the biggest challenge that we have today that we are moving so quickly and we have so many things in our mind and there's so many things going to happen the rest of the day that we don't slow down to I see you it says um, I see the whole of you your experiences your passions, your pain, your strengths, your weaknesses, and your future, you are valuable to me. And I want to again, um, for us as a group, and wherever you go, when you are at a work in a group, in your family, each of us are made differently for a reason. God created us uniquely, and we need to make sure that I see each of the people around me. Because if I want to have a fulfilled, joyful life, I want to be able to know what is in you when I connect with you. What is it that God's placed in you that's so unique that will bring me joy as well? And ultimately, we glorify Him. As we see one another, we also affirm one another. It is so important as a woman of God and taking His message and His seeds out there that we affirm one another. Because the world will not do it. And it will try to break us down at every level that we start... Um, also wondering about our own stability, our own thought process, we will start to doubt ourselves, to encourage one another and to support one another, um, to be able to walk in what God prepared for us. And um, I mentioned this also last week, Ephesians 2, uh, 10. We are His workmanship, created uniquely. So I need to um, really 
encourage and uh, Estelle, uh, she's got specific things. Belinda has got certain things. Teresa has got for me to encourage one another and each person to bring that out, to walk in what God has prepared. So bringing it back closer to home, so my whole my whole journey really was, um, I'm a very passionate person, I get stimulated by many things and I want to do everything and then I realized you can't do everything. Um, but I've got this passion on, no, I need to channel it in a way that would glorify God and be able to go the same place as the people around me. So for me, fear happened in two ways. I have immediate fear or I have the light fear. So maybe some of you can identify with that. The immediate fear is something big is going to happen and I'm so interested, but I'm just frozen because it's so much bigger than me. And to realize back and who is in me and to first hear from God, is this where you want me to step in? So being frozen, I don't want to lose control. And control was one of the big things that I needed to deal with in my life. And control, as I put at the bottom here, is rooted in fear. Um, wasted time and life. I often say, sit, sat down and listened to somebody, I looked at somebody and I thought, how inspiring. And I think, you've wasted time and you've wasted life. And that, ladies, is also not from God. Yeah. That is the enemy coming to to make you even more frozen. So that is the guilt. Guilt is not from God. You have look and say, God, show me with gratitude what has happened in my life, what the other people have invested in me, and where I've stepped out in courage, where you have opened the door for me. And that whole mind sh shift, and that's what the word uh, 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 tells us about. Think on what is good, Philippians 4. What is praiseworthy? None of the things that's gone wrong, because that's how the enemy keeps us back, is to really say, God, thank you for these things that I've walked in already. Nothing was wasted. God doesn't waste time and things, challenges that happen to us, things that's gone wrong. Um, he uses exactly that to train us first for ourselves and for the people around us for the next season. So nothing is wasted. Delight fear, I jump quickly and I run because I've got this God. I'm going to work for you. And God doesn't use us. We are his children. He loves us. He wants us to join him where he's already moving. And I think that's something that I need to stop myself every day to say, God, where are you moving? What is that rhythm of grace? And every time the enemy comes, he doesn't leave you the first time that you get it right. No, he will catharse you. He will come for you. He's a lion. He's going to slaughter you. And the more he gets on your back, the more you must know, God, I know you want to do something in me firstly and for people around me. And I want to affirm that again today because it's something really that I struggle uh, with. As when God brings something to us, a new um, prophecy, a new vision, and it's beautiful, and I think, God, this is my purpose. I'm gonna walk in meaning. And you start running, um, and it doesn't work out the way that you wanted it. The vision doesn't change. God is a God of abundance. He gives us choices. We can pick different ways. There's not one way if I cannot get it right. Oh boy, I'm out of my purpose. He will walk with us in each of those things to get to where he is and to get into that rhythm of grace. So have grace on yourself because God's grace and mercies are new every morning and walk slower. Um, God doesn't need us to run that our lungs are burning. Then we don't trust him in what he is already achieved at doing. So Good news is you don't have to have control. Control is born out of fear. It's to lay it down and to um, walk in what he's prepared. He's prepared that he's already walking in. So fear and guilt is not from God. And I've put these two scriptures down just to um, remind you. And as I went into the um, scriptures again into the word, there's so many things, such riches in the word, that um, if you start searching for something that you're struggling with, the riches in scripture is just amazing. And we have the tools today to, if you're searching for something, if you don't have the new version on your phones, ladies, you need to get it. It makes life easier. Get into the scriptures. Get into the different translations. It is beautiful. It breaks open. Those seeds just multiply as God speaks um, uh, in his word. So first one, two Timothy one, seven, we know this so well. 
Um, but we need to say it every day as we go into difficult situations with our family, our children, at school, exams. I'm doing grade four for the first time, so you have to pray for me. <laughs> um, but I think for everybody at every season, it is um, hectic. And for God, did not give us a spirit of timidity. Timidity. I'm shaking in my boots. Or cowardism. Step up, lift up your chin. Step one step. Even if you can't, you see this, this lot of trees in front of you and you can't see deep. Just take the first step. You don't have to see the whole road. Take one step at a time. Um, cowardice or fear, but he has given us a spirit of power and of love and of sound judgment. So we have to slow down. We have to listen to him to be able to get into that sound judgment. Personal discipline, abilities that result in a calm, balanced mind and self-control. So discipline, I want to just um, add something on that. The worst time for me before any project or something that I think is bigger than me is before I start. I know. <laughs> I'm just killed with, oh, what is this? What is that? Can I do this? Oh, I haven't considered everything. It is painful. It is exhausting. It is um, odd palpitations. And as soon as I self-discipline, go and sit behind my computer and I start this project and this big thing, and I said, okay, let's plan, let's start. <gasps> Why do we do this to ourselves? Self-discipline is a godly thing to go and sit down, take the first step, and it rolls out. And the biggest thing is, if you don't consider everything beforehand, it actually turns out better, because there's, there, there, there's so much room for new things. You haven't defined, this is how it should be. So Psalm 34, 4, and this is one of the big scriptures that God took me and um, really um, took me out of where I was in corporate life for 15 years. It was an amazing time, but I learned a lot. Looking back, God prepared me for so much. Um, but I also went into a deep fear, and God spoke to me on many occasions with this scripture. Um, God met me more than halfway. He freed me from my anxious fears. And to go and sit down, and every day that that comes is to give it to him. God, this is my fear. What do you give to me today? This is what I, the control, the thing, whatever it is, I give to him and ask him, because he's done it already. So from fear to glory, and I love this saying, and I needed to go home and really research. You said it the first time, because it's often said in church. And it was in the early second century, century definitely spiritual person, this. Um, the glory of God is man fully alive. And woman, how does that look? That fear doesn't reign us, but the spirit of God reigns us. We're fully alive. It doesn't mean that all 24 hours of your day is full and exploding. It doesn't mean that. It means fully alive in who I am and what is a passion in me that I need to step in. You cannot let glorify God if you don't trust Him to lead and protect you. And ultimately, in our hearts, we want to glorify God with what we do, with every breath. But if we don't trust Him, it means we don't um, give Him glory. So, Give glory to God with not only my soul, but also my mind and body. And God is so clear and his word is so clear on this that it starts in our minds. We have to um, take our thoughts capture. And also um, these two script, uh, or this scripture, uh, 1 Corinthians 6, verse 19 and 20. Um, or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God? You are not your own. You were bought with a price. So glorify God in your body. We often think, so I need to eat well, I need to exercise, I need to be healthy in my body. It's part of it. But also your body, it is your, it is your, your, your physical um, um, car, whatever you are doing. So you have to get out of bed early. You have to spend time with God. You, that's physically. You have to do that to prepare yourself for what is coming. You have to get in your car and drive to Kamilpur to do something, to join um, like Ina and um, Renee to get some of the, the things for the gold project. We have to take time on our calendar. Whatever that means, physically, we have to be there as well. We can't just 
And maybe it's a season that you only have to pray, and that could be as well. But you have to step into what is stirring in your heart and your mind. It can't just be, I'm too scared to step in, I'm going to stay on the sideline. Bring your body to the party. Does that make sense? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so again, um, Miller actually mentioned this on Sunday, and it is something that is beautiful to me. God um, is most glorified in us if we are most satisfied in Him. That is just amazing. We have such a loving God. We don't have to work and do all these things. But if we're satisfied in what He's done for us, it is so easy to step into because He's already there. He's in front of us. We are not going alone. Know who is with you and in you. And Psalm 139. Is there any place I can go to avoid your spirit, to be out of your sight? If I climb to the sky, you're there. If I go underground, you're there. If I uh, flew on morning's wings to the fat western horizon, you'd find me in a minute. You're always there waiting. Then I say to myself, oh, he even sees me in the dark. At night, I'm immense in the light. In fact, darkness isn't dark to you, night and day. Darkness and light, they're all the same to you. So when you're in that spot that you feel it's darkness, it is full light to God. Just bring it to Him and the light will shine through. It's like nothing you feel has changed around you, but yet everything has changed when you get into His presence because it's light. There's no darkness lies that the enemy brings. And sometimes we are our enemy. Sometimes it's the devil, sometimes it's we. And when we get into His presence, that light opens it up to see it for what it really is. So the last um, part that I want to leave with you is arise and glorify the King of all kings. Isaiah 60 in the Amplified verse 1, arise from spiritual depression to a new light. Shine, be radiant with the glory and the brilliance of, Lord, of the Lord. For your light has come. As we move into his presence, that's when your light comes. We often say, when is it my turn? When is my ship coming up? When is my light switched on? <laughs> it's in the presence of God that you in that ever light. Um, and the glory and the brilliance of the Lord has risen upon you. And I speak that today over every lady here, everybody that will look at this recording on Zoom, um, that the glory and the brilliance of the Lord um, has come upon you. Arise and shine. Take hold of what is stirring in your heart. Ladies, so that is my word for today, is really um, move from fear um, to glory. And the only way of doing that is not on our own. He's put so many magnificent things in us. He's created us beautifully. And as we take hold of that greatness, we sometimes step into a place of unhealthiness. But if we're in His presence and we lay down what He's put already in us, it becomes a rhythm of grace. And I speak that over myself and I speak it over each of us here. And um, yeah, I just want to, to pray for us before uh, we go into a worship song. Lord, thank you that we can just spend time around your word, Lord, and in your presence. Lord, and I pray that your life-giving light will continue just shining on us, Lord, that we'll seek that light every day. Lord, because your light never changes. There's no darkness in you, Lord, that will step into your light. And Lord, that we'll see one another in your light and that we will speak to what you've placed in us. Um, Lord, that we will glorify you, that we will be alive um, fully in you. Thank you, Lord, for your love. And thank you that you go before us and you take our hands. And I pray a blessing over everybody, Lord, that we will know um, that your light is over us and that we seek it in your presence. In Jesus' name. I've selected a song um, yesterday, and I must say, songs and worship songs really speak to my heart. Um, and the one that I selected, and I thought that was, is that the right one? Should there be? A, but I really believe that that is part of what God wants to say today to us as well. Is um, Champion from Dante Bowie, um, Bethel. This is spoken to me so often. Um, just putting it on, worshiping God in my sitting. Room. Sometimes when I have a bad moment, I, I put that on and I for a worship song. And he's our champion. And there's no battle that he has not won. Every battle that he stepped into, he has won. 
think about that, ladies, and yeah, enjoy this. Um, join me in, in, in this song, and then we'll have some communion. Um, thank you so much.
get into that, Lord, that, that we are seated in heavenly places with you, Lord. Um, thank you, Lord. We glorify you. I would love us to just get together in two, 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 um, if there's three in a group, just to pray together. We are here to, to encourage one another, to affirm one another, to pray for one another, to stand in the gap. Um, so I would love us just to, to get together now in, in two or three. And the question is just what is at the moment? That's um, what, what is their fear? And you can pray together. Ask the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, is there a fear in my heart? that I'm carrying and he is so faithful he will come and show you and you can then pray with that person um, to get that fear uh, why do you have that fear in your heart it's often that we need to forgive sometimes it's to forgive ourselves sometimes it's somebody around us that meant a lot to us sometimes it's even God because we are cross with him it's not that he's done something wrong but we are carrying something in our heart um, and forgive and give that fear to God and ask this morning what you can give back from God. He's prepared. He wants to give you something. He wants to replace that fear that is based on a lie with the truth of who he is and in your life. I would love us also to do the same on Zoom. Um, how many people are we on Zoom? Six. Maybe we can have two groups on Zoom and then if that's possible, that will be great. Ladies, please take this time and pray together in your groups. Um, and then um, if we are finished, I know some people need more time. Um, you are welcome to continue. Um, so you are welcome to go when you are finished. But spend your time. There's no hurry. Um, speak to somebody. Have some coffee and tea. And